Today I'm going to show you how to make this pink anthurium. Now these have become really popular on um, Instagram and Pinterest. So I've been wanting to try and make one for ages. So I was really excited when one of my wedding clients actually said that they're going to be having anthuriums in their arrangements as it's finally given me um, the motivation to actually get on and make one. And I was really pleasantly surprised how quick and easy they are to make, which is why I thought I'd create this tutorial for you. And the anthurium is made up of two components. So you have the spadex in the middle and then the spade here. So it's really simple to put together and we're going to do it all in white first and then dust in the colour at the end. So the only specialist bit of equipment that you need here is a veiner. And this one is a Squire's Kitchen uh, Great Impressions veiner and it's the dimpled flamingo um, in a size large but they also do an extra large and a medium. Um, but I've actually really impressed with this veiner and it gives a really nice, good impression. So we're gonna start off by making the spadex. So I'm just gonna take a small amount of paste and this is just white flour paste. And then I have a thick wire here. This one is actually by Paper and Poetry. Um, which is made by Rico, who make all sorts of paper craft items. Um, and I really like this wire because it's about the thickness of a 16 gauge or maybe slightly thicker, but it's not quite as sturdy. So you get a little bit more flex in it. But you could use a 16 or an 18 gauge wire instead. So I'm just going to start off by kneading my white flour paste. until it's nice and soft and malleable. And I'm just gonna roll it into a ball and then start rolling it out into a sausage. And the size of your spadex will vary slightly depending on the size of your veiner. So just go by the guide on the size of your veiner. And I'm just tapering it to the end so it becomes a bit narrower at one end. And I'm going to use this as a guide. So you want um, the length of the spadex to be about from where this hole is to the end. So. I'm nearly there, I'm just going to roll a little bit longer and then I'm just going to trim off this excess at the end. And you want it to be fairly narrow. So this is probably about, I don't know, five or six mil thick. So that looks like it's about the right length. So I'm just going to line this up and trim it to that hole. So I've actually taped um, my wire with some green floral tape already and I'm just going to dip the end of that in some egg white and then insert it into my sausage. And you can just go about halfway up. If it needs reshaping just roll it out again. And you can just allow it to have a slight curve at the end. So I'm just bending it ever so slightly. 
just check the length again. And I'm just going to sort of shape this end slightly. So it's not quite so sharp. I'm just going to round it off a little bit. Take a bit of my corn flour. Okay, so that's just got a very slight curve in it. And I'm just gonna set that to one side to firm up slightly before we do the next stage on it. And whilst that's just firming up slightly, we will make the spade it, so I mean the spade. So I'm taking another bit of white flour paste. And again, I'm just gonna knead this till it comes together. It's nice and smooth. Just gonna take some of my white vegetable fat, rub this onto my surface. Dust with a bit of corn flour and roll it out. Now, I want to go fairly thin with this, but not too thin because it's got quite deep grooves on the um, veiner. We don't want these to press through the paste. So I'm not going to go as thin as I normally would for petals and things. Now I'm going to lay this onto my veiner, just dust it with a little bit of corn flour. Then I'm going to lay it into the veiner, press down slightly and then put the top on and give it a good firm impression. So you're pressing quite firm but you also don't want to puncture the paste. So you can just see that's left a nice impression there. So now I'll remove it and using my scissors, I'm just gonna cut around where the vein is marked. And then at the tip, I'm just going to cut up slightly to give it a bit more of a pointed tip. Okay. So I'm now just going to take my ball tool and I'm going to soften and thin the edges. Oops. 
stuck a little bit, so I'll just trim this bit off. So once the edges are nice and thinned, we're going to just make a bit of a hole where the wire is going to go. So I've got the um, veins pointing up towards me. This is the way around we want as the upside. And I'm just going to take my wire and push it through where the hole is from the um, veiner. And I'm just going to make that into a proper hole. So I'm using my scissors to help just cut this excess bit of paste off. You basically want to make a hole that's big enough for your wire to go through. So it'll eventually thread through like that. So once you know that your, your hole is big enough, it doesn't matter if it's slightly bigger than um, the wire because you're going to stick it in with royal icing later. And then I've just got some foil here, which I have doubled over. And then we'll just lay the spade into the foil. And you want to sort of give it a bit of a cupped shape. And just have a play around um, until you're happy with the shape and just kind of bend it how you like. That's the beauty of the foils. You can bend it into any shape. So I'm going to have... So this side sort of pointing down, I'm going to have it folding a bit more in the center and then the outer sides just kind of curving down a bit, this pointed bit at the end curving up. But do have a look at some pictures of anthuriums and decide what sort of shape you want yours. This is what I'm going to go for here. So I'm going to leave that to firm up completely now. So my spadex has now firmed up slightly whilst I was making the spade. It's still a little bit soft, but it's just holding nice and firm on the wire. And I'm now going to pipe in the sort of dimpled detail on the spadex here. So to do that, we're just going to take some royal icing. This is about a sort of soft peak consistency. And I've got a number one piping tip on here, so you want it to be really fine. And I've also got a paintbrush and some water here. So if any of the royal icing dots are a little bit spiky, then you can just soften them down with the dampened brush. And I'm going to start off just from the base of the spadex and I'm going to pipe some even dots in a line, but going at a slight diagonal around the spadex. So just start at the base. And you want your dots to be very slightly larger at the base than they are at the tip. So you want them super fine at the tip. But if you just start off by piping one line at a slight diagonal, and then we'll, we'll just build up the dots from there. So I'll just zoom in a bit. And I just find that working on the diagonal just gives it a slightly more natural look. I'm just making the dots smaller as I get to the end. And now I'll just go in with my paintbrush and just soften these down a bit. Then I'll go in with the next line. These are going to sit just in between and slightly along from the previous line. And again, getting smaller, so they're really tiny at the end. And just go in with your paintbrush 
And as you build up the dots, you'll see how effective it looks. So the next line, again, it's just going to sit in between the layer before, just to the side. So just carry on building up the lines of dots until you get all the way around the spadex. Oops, if you make any mistakes, you can always so this one's gone a bit splat. I'm just going to scrape it off with my finger and just reapply. So once you start to get round and meet the dots from um, from the original piping, then you just want to sort of try and find the little gaps to make them look nice and evenly spaced. So rather than going in lines, you just kind of want to work and find the gaps to make the pattern all match up. So I'm now just dampening down the last of the dots. And then you can have a look to see if there's any. So I'm going to add an extra one on the end. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to leave this to set up completely along with the spade. So it could be a good couple of hours so they're nice and set and firm before we put the two elements together. So I'm now ready to assemble um, my two components. And I've let the spade dry so it's just not leathery. It's still got a bit of movement to it. And I've just punched a little hole in my foil here. So then you want to lay the spathe over the foil with the holes lined up and thread the wire through to pull them both together and I'm aiming for a sort of angle a bit like that so you can just line it up and see how it's going to look first and then you take your royal icing and just pipe some around the hole around the wire can be fairly generous with it. 
and then just pull the spadix down to line it up to secure it on the royal icing. And then I'm just going to take my paintbrush and just smooth around the base so that you can't see the join. It should all look nice and smooth. And if there's any gaps, you can just go in and pipe a little bit more royal icing and then just smooth it out again. And once that looks all neat, I'm then going to place this on a wire rack. So the wire is going to be hanging down through the, through the rack and the foil will sit on top. And in order to get it at the right angle, I'm actually just going to place a couple of bits of foam underneath to support this and let it dry. When you slide it into the rack, if you find that the, um, the spadex and the spade sort of move, then just go in again with your paintbrush and your royal icing and just neaten it up again and get it into a position that you're happy to dry in. And then ideally leave that overnight so that it's firmed up completely before we dust it. So this is now firmed up overnight and is nice and sturdy and now I'm ready to dust it. So you'll find that Anthurium come in lots of different colour combinations. Um, so do take a look at some pictures for inspiration on how to do yours. And I actually have a Pinterest board with some inspirational pictures if you want to get some ideas and I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description for the video. Um, for this one I'm going to go for a sort of pale green at the tip of the spadex and then a darker pink for the rest of it. And then for the spathe, I'm going to go for a sort of pale to medium peachy pink. So I've just got a selection of colours here um, to have a little experiment with mixing them. I'll start off with the green for the spadex. So I've got this sort of limey green here. I'm going to darken it slightly with a bit of dark green. And then add in a little bit of cornflower. And then I'll just start brushing the end of the spadex. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of my pink and just darken it slightly and add a bit of cornflower as well and just dust that onto the rest of the spadex. And then you just want to sort of blend the green and the pink together. And I'm going to go slightly darker at the base as well. Okay, now I'll move on to the spathe. So I'm going to introduce a bit of this sort of peachy colour and some cornflower and some of my pink and then just start to brush that on So just gradually build up the colour and you'll notice that it'll catch on these veins from the veiner as well which will create a nice texture and just highlight the veins. Okay, 
And I think I'm going to add a little bit of the green just to this tip as well. And just blending that in again. So I'm going fairly light with the colour on the spathe. So I'm then going to spray everything with confectioner's glaze afterwards. So that does tend to darken the colour slightly. So and I'll turn it over and do the same on the back. Just add a touch of green to the end. You'll sometimes see that these edge bits have a bit more of a green tinge to them, so you can add some green there as well if you like. But I'm going to keep this one just pink. So I'm just looking for any little areas that I've missed with the colour. And I'm going to put a slightly darker patch around the spadix as well. Okay, so I'm now going to spray this all over with confectioner's glaze and you want it to be quite shiny so I'm going to probably do a couple of layers. So do one layer first, allow it to dry and then lightly spray over a second layer and then that will be finished. And here is a selection of different coloured anthuriums that I've created. I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please give it a like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel to stay up to date with all of the latest videos.